1984, Benjamin Bloom published a paper reporting on a problem that he described as the Two Sigma problem. He basically found that students who uh, learn through a mastery learning model have performance that is one standard deviation above the traditional classroom chalk and talk direct instruction type model. So this is the mastery learning and student performance was one standard deviation above the traditional classroom. He also found that students who had one-to-one -one tutoring had a further one standard deviation improvement in their overall test scores. So this is one-to-one -one tutoring. So Bloom then spent a great deal of time trying to solve this, uh, this two sigma problem, trying to get this same improvement as one-on-one -on -one tutoring in a classroom of 25 or 30 students. Now, he, he obviously recognised that mastery learning uh, is a large part of that. And the idea with mastery is that students progress through the course at their own pace and periodically, when ready, they, uh, they set uh, milestone assessments and only if they demonstrate mastery on those assessments are they allowed to move on to the next part? And then of course the one-on-one -on -one tutoring, he identified that the benefits of that one-on-one -on -one tutoring is about building those positive relationships with students, being able to provide really quite timely and specific feedback to the students and providing in constant ongoing encouragement. So how can uh, a, a classroom teacher get those same sort of improvements uh, you know, in a a whole classroom as you can get from one-on-one -on -one tutoring? Well, I think part of the answer is through learner-centered practice. And one of the great ways of being able to implement learner-centered practice is through flipped learning. So here's some of the principles of learner-centered practices that we're able to achieve through flipped learning. Now, so what we're able to do with flipped learning is four key learner-centered practices. The first one is differentiation. Of course, when students are interacting with a new knowledge, they're able to press pause and rewind and watch as many times as they need to. Uh, and then importantly in the group space, and then importantly in the group space, the teacher's freed up to be able to spend the most time with the students that need the most help. Another important learner centre practice is about building positive relationships with students. Much like Ben Bloom found that the one-on-one -on -one tutoring gave the, the tutor an opportunity to provide encouragement to the student uh, and individualised feedback. Again, flip learning provides the teacher an opportunity to spend more time with each student in every class every single day. And that provides an opportunity to build relationships, which links to differentiation and rapport and provides um, you know, timely and effective, really specific feedback. The next one is about providing students with choice and control of their learning. Students are more motivated to learn if they're given some choice and control of their learning. And with flipped learning, students are allowed to do that because particularly in the individual space, they're in control of when they learn and um, the pace in which they learn. So it gives students some choice and control and of course that happens in the group space as well with the group collaborative activities. And the last one, and really importantly, is about active learning. Flip learning provides a teacher with time to be able to be spent uh, practicing and deepening the knowledge through active collaborative tasks. So it's these four key characteristics of learner-centered practice that flipped learning is so well placed to be able to support. And it's through implementing these learner-centered practices, we, we should be able to move our student performance in this direction to emulate or to try and approach the sorts of improvements that students can get from the one-on-one -on -one tutoring. So I'm gonna be talking about these concepts uh, at ResCon. And as well as that, I'm going to report on my research, which looked at providing uh, flipped learning curricula resources to a number of beginning teachers or early career science teachers with the hope that they were able to implement these learner-centered practices 
in their classrooms earlier. Certainly, we know that beginning teachers, uh, it's a big struggle in the first year just to survive. And so any learner-centered practices that beginning teachers were, were taught at university tend to uh, get forgotten about and the teacher adopts any practice they can to survive, which is often a quite um, conservative, direct instruction lecturing at the front of the room. So I provided these flipped learning curricular resources to these early career teachers and monitored how they were able to implement those to be able to establish learner-centered practices in their classrooms. So we all know that the real value in education is not the resources, but it's the teacher. But if we're able to provide curricular resources to teachers, well, it means that they have more time, more energy, and more effort to be able to develop as teachers, to be able to de develop their learner-centered teaching skills, to be able to differentiate and build positive relationships, give students choice and control of their learning, and design active learning tasks for students to practice and deepen their knowledge. And that's my real passion, is being able to leverage resources to build teacher capacity. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about at ResCon. So I'll see you there.